Shalom, this is Brother Ahawad of GMS Toronto, giving all praises, glory, and honor unto Yahweh, Bashim Yahweh Shai, Bashim Rakakwadash, double honors unto the elders and elder apostles of GMS, um, to the brothers on the four corners of the earth, doing this work in truth and in sincerity. Shalom to you as well. Um, uh, coming back with a part three um, as to um, America. America going broke. Um, this comes off of the back of uh, the Federal Reserve um, will raise rates. Um, so I'm just going to play a quick clip and we're going to dissect this clip because these two men, even though it's a very short clip, they're going to say a lot. A rate hike, of course, tomorrow looks almost like a certainty. There's nothing certain in life, right? Fed futures showing a 96% chance of that happening. But look at September with a 70% chance of a hike and even in December, a 40% chance. Hmm, Dennis Gartman, he's the editor and publisher of one of the most widely followed publications on the street, the Gartman Letter. Thank you so much, Dennis, for being here. So what about that? We expect the Fed to make a move yes. tomorrow, 96%. By all accounts, probably 105 percent. Very good. Very good. But what about September? What about December? If you look around the economy, it's doing very well. Where I live in Southern Virginia, there's help wanted signs everywhere. Wages are going up. Truckers are making 100 to 120 thousand dollars a yeah. year now. There's shortages of labor. I don't think there's any question that that the inflationary pressures are, are mounting. The Fed is going to move in September, and I don't think there's any question but that they shall move in December also. And surely that just speaks, as you say, to a healthy economy. We need to oh, yeah. see, we need to get back after so many years of cheap money sloshing around, we're finally getting back to fundamentals. Now, they just said a lot, right? You had the gentleman, um, not the interviewer, the interviewee, explaining how the economy is good and then you had the interviewer concur he agreed with the man the interviewer the interviewee right saying the economy is great all right why let's go let's rewind it we're gonna play it again we're gonna dissect we're gonna get the meat off of all these bones uh, the the Fed is going to move in September, and I don't think there's any question but that they shall move in December also. And surely that just speaks, as you say, to a healthy economy. We need to oh, yeah. see, we need to get back after so many years of cheap money sloshing around. So it speaks because he's saying it's a really good economy because of what? Because of cheap money. Because interest rates were at zero, right? Interest rates being very low means... Money is cheap. It's easy to borrow money. We live in a credit-based society. What does that mean? That means you people can you can go out and you can buy your homes. Right? You can go out and you can borrow money to do what? To start businesses. When you start businesses, what are you able to do? You're able to hire employees. When money is low, corporations are able to then higher employees, right? You people can take out uh, uh, liens on your mortgages, which means what? You can borrow more money. So what is that? You can then go into more debt. So it's an air of things are going well, but things are not going well because it's still all debt. You're still going deeper and deeper into debt, period. Right? So let's continue. We're finally getting back to fundamentals. Uh, the fact that we have Fed funds where they are right now is yeah. egregiously, I think, stupid. When the Fed funds should be at 4%. Right. So this guy's saying the interest rates being so low, he's saying that it's stupid. But guess who low interest rates help? They help you poor people. They help poor people, period. Right? Because poor people then can afford to do things like buy homes, uh, 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 lease cars. When interest rates go up, you people are not going to be able to buy homes. You're definitely not going to be able to lease your cars. You won't be able to borrow money, right? It's going to be very hard for you. And in the very near future, 
I, I can remember as, as, as a trader of a certain age, I can remember when the eights of 86, the greatest 10-year instrument of all time, came out <laughs> and went immediately to a discount. And as I've said yeah. here on TV before, I can remember when the 14 and a quarter percent 30-year treasuries in, in 1982 couldn't be given away. So the fact that here we are with a 10 percent, we're barely at, at, right. right under 3 percent. Right. Are Two we going to get to four? Absolutely, we shall. Yes, just we, should. we should. This interviewee, the interviewee, He's talking about 1986. In 1986, the American dollar wasn't dead. In 1986, the American dollar still had a little bit to it. In 1986, gas prices weren't $70 a barrel. Gas price, the barrel of price in 1986 was, was probably $40 a barrel, $30 a barrel. Do you understand? People had cheap homes. Homes didn't cost $500,000 for a home, right? Transportation wasn't so expensive. Healthcare wasn't so expensive. What is this fool talking about? This is all disinformation, but it's also good information because if you listen, they are going to actually tell the truth. They are going to tell the truth. All you got to do is listen. So let's continue. We should. We should. We should. I, I said this to a trader earlier. I, I mean, the money is coming into U.S. equities because Europe is lollygagging about flatlining for the most part. This man said Europe is lollygagging and flatlining. The reason why Europe is lollygagging and flatlining is because America is destabilizing their economy with all of this cheap money. Right? It's, 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 um, you're playing with their money, right? With inflation, inflation and D de and deflation is war, right? That's a war tactic. That's why Greece went through what they went through because of American banks, man. Right. Asia, Japan, all the rest of it. I feel like this is the game in town that you need to be in. Correct. Did you hear what the man said? This is the game period. He's not, he, he hasn't misquoted himself. He's letting you know that this is all a game. Finance at this current juncture in life is all a game. They are just playing with the numbers. They're keeping gold relatively low. And the reason why they're keeping gold low is because the higher gold goes is the lower the dollar goes. The higher the dollar is, the lower gold is, right? But remember, gold is actually, uh, uh, has intrinsic value, intrinsic value, because gold you can touch, you can feel. Gold you can make things out of. Gold is actually a, a substance. The dollar is not backed by anything. It's backed by faith, by trust. All you got to do is watch the, the video I did before this dollar is nothing it's 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 fugazi right it's fairy dust <laughs> like they said in uh, one of my favorite movies Wolf of uh, Wolf of Wall Street well there's no question that our economy is doing better than anybody else's is let's rewind and all the rest of it I feel like this is the game in town that you need to be in correct mm -hmm. well there's no question that did you hear what the man said this is the game in town Right. Because what games come from the feds lowering interest rates when they lowered interest rates to zero? The game that came from that was being able to buy homes, to buy money cheaply, to get bonds. Right. You were able to do all these things. You were able to get loans. You were able to go to the bank now and to get loans. Right. And interest rates were very low. Now, when you raise interest rates, what's, what is going to be the game? The game is going to be a lot of you people who, who made money off of low interest rates, you're going to lose your money. So what's that going to mean? It's going to mean the rich is going to get richer and the poor is going to get poorer, which is, that's exactly what they're doing. They're destroying the middle class. They are destroying the middle class. A lot of you Americans, you are going to end up what? Poor. How can I prove that? Well, there's a report that just came out. Now, I'm not going to cover all of this. 
Um, this is something that is a good read that you brothers can get into. It's called Why America is the World's First Poor Rich Country or How America Collapse is Made of a New Kind of Poverty, right? It says, consider the following statistics. The average American can't scrape together 500 for an emergency. A third of Americans can't afford food, shelter, and health care. Health care for a family now costs 28000 about half of the median income, which is 60, right? So, boom, half of your money's gone to health care, right? It says, uh, I'm going to jump down to uh, where they were talking about the middle class. Let's read the highlight. It says, America, it seems, is becoming something like the world's first poor rich country, and that is the elephant in the room. We aren't quite grasping. After all, authoritarianism and extremism don't arise in a prosperous society, but in troubled one which are grown impoverished like America is today. Mm. It says America appears to be pioneering a new kind of poverty altogether, one for which we do not yet have a name. It is something like living at the knife's edge, constantly being on the brink of ruin, one small step away from catastrophe and disaster, ever at the risk of falling through the cracks. It has two components, massive inflation, which we're talking about, <laughs> For the basics of life, like what? Like um, like food, um, right? And food is being inflated, right? All of that stuff. Energy, cost of energy, right? Everything is being inflated, coupled with crushing um, asymmetrical risk. I'll come to what those mean shortly. Um... Bear with me. Oh, there it is. I passed it. It says, let's begin with what I don't mean. I don't mean absolute poverty. Americans are not living on a few dollars a day by and large, like people in, for example, Somalia or Bangladesh. America's medium income is still that of a rich country, around 50000 depending on how it's counted. Nor do I really mean relative poverty. People living below medium income. While that's a growing problem in America because the middle class is imploding. That is not really the true problem these numbers hint at either. But what what did the article um say? That the middle class is imploding. Right? Which is what they want. That's exactly what the game is. The game is to get rid of the middle class and to have the elite and the poor. That's it. That is it. Let's go back to interview. That our economy is doing better than anybody else's is. The Fed has already begun the process. Rewind. To be in, correct? Well, there's no question that our economy is doing better. Rewind. Uh, Japan, all the rest of it. I feel like this is the game in town that you need to. Right? This is the game. So this is a game. That's some truth. That's 100% truth. Be in, correct? Well, there's no question that our economy is doing better than anybody else's is. The Fed. That's a lie. That is a lie. The reason why their economy is doing uh, relatively better than other economies is because of a thing called quantitative easing, which I touched on in um, part two. Right. I touched on that in part two. So watch part two about quantitative easing. It goes into it. That's the only reason why America is doing relatively better, period. It's not truly doing better, as we were reading in that article, right? So 